You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another friendly episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is <laughs> Rob. <laughs> Um, I don't know why I found that funny. I think I almost said my name is Paul. Anyways, we're glad that you are with us. This is episode number 912. Thank you so much. No, you have a lot of options. More now than ever. More every day. And yet so many of you are sticking with us from the very beginning. And some coming on every day. And we appreciate it very much. Send your questions in. AskDroneU.com. We want to hear from you. Because you have a unique thought that a lot of other people are thinking. And they may not even know it. So take a minute. Send your question in. AskDroneU.com. Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah, I want to jump right into the question. Is that, what uh, you, is that how yeah. you're feeling? I, I'm really excited about today's question because it's all about how do drones provide value to construction. So let's answer the damn thing. Hey, Paul and Rob. My name is Phil Baker, and I have a question regarding drone usage. The company I work for deals in green coke refinery byproduct, and they use airplane photography for volume inventory purposes. I am trying to convince them to invest in drone tech to take its place since I know it can be beneficial for them, such as more often use and faster turnaround on data. My question is, what can I tell or show them that is really going to knock their socks off to convince them drones are the way to go since they have someone in the company that can manage the program already? They are worried about not being able to calculate volume that is above our base level but below the bottom of our piles. I've hinted at Phantom 4 Pro and Pix40 software. Is this a good option? Thanks and love the podcast. It has great info. Thank you, Phil. We appreciate that very much. Appreciate you taking a minute to send your question in. I got to tell you, and I know you've got some good ideas for him on how to handle this and how to go to his management. But to me, I'm thinking, why, why are they so close-minded? Like, what's hard about maybe just... Uh, ask, okay, if you've got concerns, say, hey, can you show us how it would do this, right? Get more information that would help them not be so close-minded. Why are they close-minded? Yeah. One word that I learned at Veritas when we were training at Veritas, it's called acedia. Do you know what acedia is? I don't know what acedia is. Acedia. I'm going to... Um, acedia is a state of listlessness or torpor of not caring or not being concerned with one's position or condition in the world around them. Acedia is also known as a mental or spiritual sloth. Acedia is the state of listlessness. Um, it can lead to a state of being unable to perform one's duties in life, blah, 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 blah. I see it as wow. laziness. Um, That's probably part we of We are yeah. human. Fear. If you get in a certain system, you don't want to change that system because it's harder. And you don't want to change because you like life being easy and drama free and all these things. But sometimes your fight or flight primal mind doesn't understand. And look, I, I'm guilty of this too. Oh, we all so are. don't don't we think that by me saying this that I'm I'm free of it, which is not true at all. But the point is, is that our minds cannot sometimes understand or empathize that these changes in our systems and workflows, even at, at a human level, at a at a personal level will have mass changes in our lives. It's the same reason someone goes and has a heart attack and they say, well, you know, you could really be better off if you ate nothing but greens and no sugars and no desserts, none, none of that. You just went to a green diet, like mostly vegetables, salads, lean meats, right? Well, if more people did that, the chances are that our death rate of heart disease would probably go down significantly, but it doesn't. Why? Fair enough. Because people don't like to change. In fact, recently... In our class in Austin, someone asked me, they're like, Paul, why do you say geriatric so much? What is a geriatric to you? And this was an older guy. And it, and it was Charlie. And Charlie, you're not a geriatric. I think you're really cool. And, he, and I said, look, I want to define really quick what I think of as a geriatric, okay? Because yeah. a geriatric could be someone who's your age, Rob. It's not about age for me. It's about their mentality of the world, right? Mm. I think of a geriatric as someone who doesn't live up to the words that they preach to other people all the time. So it's an older person who's constantly telling you to do the right thing, yet they will happily, you know, do something stupid, like close the door in your face or, you know, like they're not, they're not very uh, considerate, right? So a geriatric is someone who's not considerate, 
unwilling to change in their ways, even though it would massively benefit themselves or other people around them. And they're unwilling to learn about those things. That is a geriatric in my mind. Someone who has just given up on life, they're just happy in the status quo, and they don't give a shit about anyone but themselves. Okay? That's a geriatric. Now, when it comes to why is this person not changing their systems to allow for drones, I don't know. Do I look like the magic man? Like, I can't tell you, Rob, why they don't want to change systems. Uh, yeah, no one's asking you to do that, but go ahead. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but what I can do is help this person understand that to, to bypass psychology to sell this, but also understand the value in the sale itself. So there's two distinct problems. Distinct problem number one is how do you communicate the value? You communicate the value by, um, hey, Rob, I know uh, quarterly results are coming up soon. Um, I just recently found out from this study published by Propeller, who makes AeroPoints, and yes, the study exists, that another company who was flying quarries found that their company was wasting $1.1 million annually just because of a lack of accuracy in volumetric measurements over their piles. That's a lot of money, right? Mm, that's a lot of money. Now, what if we found out cool, through pocket. data that the averages and mistakes on our piles were maybe not that large, but large enough where it was having a five, a six figure impact to the business. I'd want to know about that. You would want to know about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, what do we need to do then to help you visualize the value of flying drones to autonomously get these volumes? In a faster way than much faster than what we can do with a plane, mm -hmm. much greater detail because we're flying a lot lower than a plane, right? And on top of that, we're utilizing a gimbaled camera. And on top of that, we're using GCPs so we can actually have a decent idea of the scale of our piles. Um, if I can show you that maybe the accuracies in our volumes that we're doing, if they're not accurate, are you interested in moving to a new system? that would allow us to gather that data quickly? I am interested in learning more because my buddy Bill flies the plane and I don't want to put Bill out. Well, I'm not saying that Bill is a bad guy, but how would your boss or our I boss, the boss or the company feel if we were wasting millions of dollars every year on something that was a simple fix? That would be downright dumb. I agree. That being said, I, with your permission, I'd like to go out and map our piles weekly. I would like to utilize a program called PIX4D. I'm going to have to rent a GPS unit to mark my ground control points. But I want to show you that in under a few hours, I can actually output our volumes for these piles very quickly. Sounds good. Start to finish. I want you to understand the workflow from start to finish so you can see the mass efficiencies, right? The efficiency of what does it take to send someone out in a plane versus mm -hmm. prop up a drone. I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to take me five minutes to put a drone in the air via an autonomous app. And I've been doing it a long time. So the average person probably 15 minutes to get a plane though, through pre-flight check, get approved through the tower and go take off and all that is going to take about 90 minutes, right? In 90 minutes, I'm already starting to process and I'm probably on step two of processing where I'm ready to actually show those volumes. Now, I did learn something new this weekend. Uh, let me see if it's in here. Stockpilereports.com. And stockpilereports.com, while I have not used it, has a way of utilizing your data to output really beautiful reports, right? Mm. It's a really cool way. I like it. Only problem, my friend, uh, is the price point. Opportunity. If you want to track 40 piles a year, it's going to cost you $4,800. That is a gargantuan waste of money. That's a like, big number. I love what Stockpile Reports is trying to do, but I'm like, where is the value for this? Like, I really don't get it. Because, and they're also showing that you can do this with a phone, you can do this with a plane or a drone. I uh, dude. That's almost like a joke. It is a joke. Um, even if I want to do five piles per year, I'm looking at fifteen hundred dollars a year. I could buy a used Phantom and a month subscription of Pix 4D and do probably a hundred piles. Yeah, and put it in a spreadsheet. Yeah. And on all <laughs> honesty, I'm gonna be taking the time to make my reports beautiful. 
Um, because anyway, the reason I mentioned this is that in our mapping class in San Diego, we were going over how to showcase cut and fill reports to clients because there's not really a beautiful way to do it unless you're using something like drone deploy, which is a complete joke. Um, or you're using, um, oh, there was another app that was doing it. But anyway, after looking at the drone deploy reports and after looking at the other reports, it was like, wait a minute, this is as easy as like a Google docs form. Like, let's just make this in Google docs and then boom, 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 done. And so that's what we did. Anyway, I was showing it to students. That's how I learned about stockpile reports. But going back to our original question, sorry, rabbit hole, going back to our original question, if he were to have a Phantom 4 Pro, he's right about that. We need the Phantom 4 Pro because it's got that global shutter. It's not a linear rolling shutter. It's going to be much faster to process, much less error. He's going to need ground control points. Typically, if he's measuring the same piles over and over again, I would create permanent ground control points. So I would just make some out of plywood, yeah. pull the point once, um, and then leave the plywood out there, stake to the ground so it doesn't move. And I would just use those points over and over again. Then I would fly a double grid, no orbits, not necessary, just a double grid, process that, add my GCPs in, processing area, output to step three all the way, go to index calculator, write down the volumes, copy and paste the numbers from the index calculator into a Google Sheet. Boom, done, volumes are there. Everything you need to know, including the error rate is there. Now, I made that sound really simple. There's obviously a lot more in the workflow for processing to make that happen, like you know, ensuring that you have the correct output coordinate system, really important. Um, but you're going to systematize all that, and once you've done it two, three, four, however many times, yeah. especially if you're doing the same piles, <laughs> the same areas, right? It's but, gonna be... Yeah, no, I, I, I agree 100%. I was just going to say, in this last class in Austin, we were going over why doing maps without ground control points is not accurate for volumetrics. I understand that there are a lot of people in the mapping in, in world that say you don't need GCPs for volumes, but I would challenge you to do a mapping mission of a house in the same way that you would a volume mission. And I would measure the front of the house just to know what it was, go in the software, create a polyline without GCPs, and then get the same measurement for the front of the house and see how far off that number is. And I'll tell you from watching 12 people process the same map Everyone had a different number before they processed their scale constraint in their mm. map. And I asked the students, I said, okay, so you're seeing that there's at least a six foot gap in data from just this front wall. Mm -hmm. How can you be sure that your volumes aren't off seeing the difference in scale right there? And everyone's, this guy who owns a construction firm, he's sitting there scratching his head like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, GCPs are necessary for volumetric measurements, at least precision accurate measurements. Right. So, and uh, if you're not going to do it pre precisely, why, why do, do it? Why do it at all? Yeah. Yeah. And this whole like everyone trying to get around GCPs, look, that was me too for a long time, okay? Just rent the damn GPS equipment, learn how to use it and make it work. It's going to save you so much time and headaches. Just trust me on this one. So, where are the value? The value is 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 couplefold. Uh number 1, the time it takes to acquire the data is going to be much faster. Number two, the time to process the data is going to be much faster. Number three, we're going to need less images because they're being taken at a lower altitude. Number four, and that's why number three correlates with number one and two. Number four, we're going to be able to provide much more accurate measurements of the volumes itself in the PIX4D app and output that material much, much, much faster. Also, you'll be able to control the material so you'll actually understand how accurate the measurements that you're taking truly are, mm -hmm. which is a lot more information than whatever the plane mapper is providing. Not to mention safer, less expensive, a lot all those less practical expensive. elements that play into this as well. Yeah, so what's a bump flight for a Cessna, right? Well, if you rent the plane from Bodhi over here, it's about 100, 180 an hour. If you want an, a, someone to ride with you to fly the plane, it's 250 an hour. Um, then you got to pay for gas in the plane. So we're at 180, 250, right? What's the camera cost? What's the gimbal cost? Um, and then, I mean, how many days of the year can the plane fly versus the drone? This is a no brainer for me. I know. Like, <laughs> that's, that's why, I, I, that's why I opened the show with, I don't even understand why, why this But dude, we're dealing with this right now with a contractor here in town. that's like, yeah. uh, can, uh, can you help me understand the value of volumes? And I literally am like, can you understand the value of a vehicle? Excuse oh, my language. Sorry. It's like. We're going to have to beat that one out of the show. Um, but it's kind of like one of those questions where it's like, it's so dumb. It's like, 
just take 30 seconds to think about this on your own, okay? Because you're really not making yourself look good. Well, but asking the question helped me understand. I don't think that's a bad question. If this person is at least open to understanding, I think that's that's a good starting point, right? I'm getting oh, the I'm sense. Not trying to give, I'm not trying to say anything negative about the question asker either. He's no, 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 clearly I know you're not. trying no, no. to better understand how yeah. do I showcase the value and communicate that value to my contract. No, but no, I'm talking about the person, his boss, or this, the owner or the, the operations we're, manager of this construction company. We're not going to say who it is. Is. No, that's that's fine. Nor should we. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if they're at least starting at a point of help me understand, this is intriguing. I'd like to learn more. I'm okay with that. I mean, that's where they should start, right? They can't just yeah. say, "Yeah, go for it." That'd be awesome. They need to understand. If, well, that's, I mean, if they leadership. did say, "Yeah, just go for it," that shows showcases a severe lack of understanding of workflow and the monetary value of that workflow. Um, yeah, there's that. That wouldn't be good either. That wouldn't be good. Gosh, either. after reading, never split the difference. It's like. Dude, the power that you have in your mind over people, it, it just instantly is unreal because you understand how people think about things. And when you understand how people think about things, it just provides this innate, like, psychological, like, ah, I don't even know how to say it. It's, it's like if you walked into the world and 25 years later, you finally had an understanding of the environment around you. Hmm. And you now knew how to navigate that environment. Yeah. So what you're saying is if you haven't read Never Split the Difference, you're crazy. I'm saying if you've heard people tell you to read Never Split the Difference <laughs> and you haven't read it, then that's the fair. only person that you are absolutely murdering is yourself. That's, um, that's a better way to say it because uh, this might be the first time they're hearing about it. Yeah. And <laughs> that's, I mean, that's fair. And here's the thing, like, oh man, go read the book. Just go read the book. I've now read it 11 <laughs> and times. And listen to that podcast because it's a good podcast. Oh, I don't people say that too. Uh, I don't it was the like, uh, it was a July 5th of this year. Just search Chris Voss in the. In Drone You, yeah, and you'll find it. Um, a lot of people who have read the book have come back to me and said, like, I love that you had him on the show because you actually went deeper than and some of the questions that I had from the book. And it was like really powerful. Yeah, it was and good. and it they was were good. also saying they're like, you can actually see how the tone changes and builds throughout the conversation. Well, because he starts to respect you throughout the conversation. Yeah. I think that's what happened, at least in some part. Yeah, no, I I, not I large part. agree with that hundred percent. And you know what? Yeah. That's the curse of age, right? Everyone's talking about me calling people geriatrics. I, I would like to remind everyone of how hard it is to gain credibility and authority when you look like you're 12. Well, yeah. Or, when, <laughs> or Hey, beard. <laughs> or being in the millennial generation. Oh, so I get extra degrading value for that, dude. No, no, right? no, I'm not saying I'm not on that camp necessarily. I'm just saying. So I'm supposed to wear a man bun and I hate all old people. Is that what you're saying? Well. <laughs> I deserve all of it. <laughs> I deserve all of it. <laughs> oh, gosh. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, please go to askdroneu.com and upload it because we'd love to help you. And uh, thanks for your help and support. If you haven't become a member of the DroneU community, well, we'd greatly love to see you there. Yep. And that's going to do it. So my name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask DroneU. Ask DroneU.